Okay, everybody, <clears throat> it's going to be a quick uh, down and dirty video on how to troubleshoot one of these uh, Honeywell gas control valves. Uh, normally, the problem is going to be uh, code 4, high temperature shutdown, and you get locked out and it won't reset. But let's go over a few things um, to see, to make sure everything else is uh, okay, and then you can go ahead and perform the repair. The first thing I like to do is switch it to pilot and I take a lighter and I heat up the thermal pile and within about a minute you want to see that light come on. If the light's up blue, which it usually, you know, after a few minutes, then most likely your control board is okay. All right. However, you can still have faults if your thermal pile is not producing enough voltage. This thing should... Um, produce about a half a volt. So to test that, you take a multimeter, okay? Let me uh, range it. Take a multimeter and we're gonna back probe uh, the two wires in here. Make sure that we get up to a half a volt. Okay, we have our voltmeter set up. We're gonna be back probing. The red wire is the positive to focus. The red wire is the positive and the black is in the white is the negative for the thermal pile. I'm going to set that aside and we're going to heat this and make sure that we get up to a half a volt. And it should take about 45 seconds. Now I have one that's um, borderline defective and it only goes up to 0.3 volts. And that's after about, you know, two minutes of heating it. That will be enough for the control board to power up. But it may not run properly. So again, this, this should heat up to about a half a volt within about a minute. If it never goes over 0.3 volts, then I would probably replace the thermal pile just to make sure that you're getting adequate voltage because this is what gives you power to your control board. It's been about a minute. And we're almost up to 0.4 volts. And this is why if your pilot is not centered right in the thermal pile, you could also have problems with your control valve. Because that flame needs to be right in the center. I think this is the defective one I was using, but we're almost there. I think my flame is dying. See, we don't have enough heat because I've been using this for a while. So the thermal pile should go up to uh, at least 0.4 volts 
ideally it should go up to a half a volt and it's going to drop off quickly when the flame is off of it so that's the first thing i would do test that make sure you have adequate voltage uh, at least 0.4 volts or greater and to make sure that your control board is operating correctly if it is then move on to troubleshooting all right we're going to come underneath here Ooh, that's hot let's get this out of my way All right, so in here, on the bottom, there's going to be a small Torx bolt with a, uh, it's got a slice in it so you can get your flathead in there. Take that out. And then back here, there's going to be two tabs. Push down on those two tabs with a screwdriver. And then this cover will come out one two pop this out good and that flips over and you have some wires here we want to do some more testing these are actually um, like solenoids it's the gas control valve so we're going to want to test these, <clears throat> and I always test them for ohms first. I set my meter to ohms. And you should have right around 11 and a half ohms on each one. One is going to be your pilot, and one is going to be your main burner. So all you do with that, and this is your, your ground post. So come over here. And we're gonna test for ohms. Ooh, make sure I'm on it. 11.5. And then come over here. Eventually I'll get this thing. I'm doing everything one-handed. Story of my life, right? One there. Ah. Good. And we're on that one. And we should have 11.5. And then the ohms across these two should be the sum of each one separately. So it should be right around 23. And I'm going to I'm going to get this, guys. This guy bear with me. One-handed is not uh, all that easy. Okay. So around these two, we're going to be right around if I can get my hand on it. 22.9. So that's good. And I have a I have a few of these gas control valves here. And they're all the same. One there we tested. I have another one here we tested. Okay. And they're all around 11 and a half ohms with the two top posts being around 23. The next thing you want to do is make sure that the solenoids actually work. And this is where you see people trying to like reset it by moving the solenoids, okay, uh, with like a nine volt battery. So you just want to make sure that these actually move and they're not stuck. So let me turn my voltmeter off and I'll bring it right back. Okay, this is a power probe, but you could easily just take a 12 volt battery or a 9 volt battery, have two leads, ground, and then you're going to apply power. And we should hear a click each time we apply power. Let's see if you could hear it. Okay, so you can hear the clicking, okay, for this for the uh, gas control valve or the solenoids. Uh, now I'm doing this uh, off, but it's a good idea to keep the <laughs> the gas off while you're doing this. So again, I have this dismounted, but if you're doing this on the heater, definitely take the gas off. 
all right because you are you know you are applying power and electric near gas all right so that really leaves us with uh, either uh, we, we know we don't have uh, number two which is uh, low voltage it could be a bad flame sensor okay but I doubt that because that would be next to the thermal pile as well and I don't think uh, on the reams to actually use a flame sensor. That's actually different. That's more of like an A.O. Smith. But this is a generic uh, faceplate. Uh, gas control valve failure. We tested it. So it's not number seven. If, if this didn't click when we tested it, then for sure you have a problem with the gas control valve itself. That's number seven. Um, temperature sensor failure. That's possible. That's behind here. So at that point, I would uh, just replace the whole gas control valve. We're really after this number four, which is a uh, high temperature shutdown. It gets too hot. It locks itself out and it won't reset. So how we fix that is uh, we're going to have to change this control board. So there's a T15 screw right there. We're going to undo that screw. And then there's a few tabs. We'll pull back on this tab, pull back on that tab, and pull back on that tab. And then this will come right out. Okay, so I have this loose. I took out the T15 and then the tabs. You just push them over with your finger or use a screwdriver. Then the board will simply pop right up. Flip it over. And there's a connector right there. You'll get your new board. Okay. Verify that it's the same part number. The part number is written very 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 tiny on the corner five zero zero eight zero one nine six okay it's right on the back that's the part number for this board all right and the same thing over here this one has a sticker but it's the same part number i peel back the sticker just to make sure and uh, we pop in the new board, and we're good to go. This wire just pulls right out. And then just do the reverse. So this board was defective. I already did it, but I wanted to film the process and how I got to uh, determine that the board was bad. I kept getting a, a 4 on the lockout. I tested everything else out. It was good. I had good voltage. I had uh, good ohms. I had power. At the solenoids, when I gave them power, I heard them click. So it really came out to there's nothing else wrong except for the board was bad. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And I actually made a mistake. The water temperature sensor is buried in here. Oop, get this thing to focus. And that's behind... Um, the, ga the gas control valve itself. So I would venture off to say if you keep having issues with the high temperature shutdown after you change the control board, it could be this sensor is no good and that's behind the metal control valve. And that's really not worth um, trying to fix. Just replace the entire uh, gas control valve gas control valve at that point now conversely if you also have power at the thermal pile and it's uh, 0.4 volts or more and the board's not lighting up the board is dead and then replace the board as well so really code number four uh, I would be very suspect of the board especially if you can't reset it then the board it could be the problem or if you have power at the thermal pile and you tested it and the board's still not lighting up the board's defective replace the board uh, I sell these on eBay and uh, I only use factory you know these are factory used parts they're genuine they're not fake and I pop these bad boys in no problems and what else is there if you have the faceplate like this then these boards are usually all the same 
and these are usually on the reams and then if you have it silver if it's silver these are usually like your A.O. Smiths or your Bradfords and these boards have their own part number but they're generally the same um, if the face plates are the if the face plates are the same then the boards are usually the same but again always check the part number and I usually stock both both boards I also have the valve itself if you want to replace the valve I could send you off the valve as well